Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. For those who are finding this message later, it is the month of January in the year 2020. And I want to review with you some things that I've talked about before and the status of the planet when it comes to the shift. But this shift is geology, is weather. And so I'm going to tell you what is happening. And we're going to review it with what I said was happening. And when I started 15 years ago giving you information that today you are experiencing. This message is one of two. The second one will follow later today. For those of you who say, well, I don't know how to find the first or the second one, and are listening to this, I will say yet again, there are easy ways where all of the channels are together. Find it. I cannot open this message without the amazing gratitude. It's a word that only you have. The gratitude is, is, a, is a human word. It doesn't exist on the other side of the veil. Only pure, perfect love exists there. But gratitude would be a word you would understand. Gratitude for what you've gone through to get to this place, dear ones. For what is about to happen on the planet in these next decades that will change so many things and you are here. There's always those listening that says, well, you got that one wrong because I'm not going to live three more decades, Cryon. And the first thing I would say is why not? And the second one is even if you don't, you're going to be here. Figure that out. Old souls are the ones listening to this, old souls. And the old souls are the ones who will return the fastest with an elevated consciousness. The ones that won't make the same mistakes they did this time. The ones that will have a far greater idea of solution to issues that are unsolvable today. That's what's in front of you. Do you know what happens when you have someone new arrive with paradigm shifts that are radical? The answer is, well, you normally don't hear about them very long. Because the planet likes the paradigm they're in quite a bit. That is going to change. And there's going to be those, so many, who will pay attention even to those who have ideas that never have been put forward before. Those ways. Paradigm change is like that. If I interviewed any of you who were alive 50 years ago and I said, tell me about Google. And you say, I don't know what that is. Is it a cartoon character? And then we started to explain it. You would not know what it was because there was no, no technology leading up to it that you understood. You wouldn't understand the computers or the internet or the Wi-Fi, much less the software much less Google. In other words, we've said this before, there are steps in between the steps that you have to go through in order to finally get to that place where it makes sense. And consciousness shift is among them. Fifteen years ago, we started to tell you that this planet is in a cycle. And that cycle is a weather cycle. And we gave you much information over the years of what it's going to look like and what it might seem like. And the only reason we would do that, dear ones, is to warn you in time so that you could get out of the way. 
We didn't give it to you as a doom and gloom message ever. It's like a road sign that says, beware of this, beware of that, turn left, turn right. Some did, some did not. And now it begins in earnest to show itself in so many places, in so many ways. Here's what we have told you over the years. The planet is in a cycle that it has been in before. And it has been in these cycles for a very long time. The cycles were known to Gaia and performed by Gaia in this way that you're seeing today before humanity was humanity. It's something the earth does. The reasoning for this is not obvious at all. Because right now, scientists aren't even seeing it as a cycle. And when they do, there'll be an aha in the future of why the planet would do what it does. And it has to do with temperature. It has to do with weather. It has to do with climate change that is needed and necessary for this planet in order to rejuvenate itself and the life in the oceans and all of the things that you thought you took for granted and that were always the same. Dear ones, they get stagnant, just like your fish tank, and has to be rejuvenated. And the only way Gaia has to do that is with the change in temperature. And so I told you that you're headed for a number of events, both in micro weather and maximum earth weather, that have to do with changing temperatures on the planet, but you're really headed for a cooling cycle. Some have called it a mini ice age. Now that's frightening, because when you say ice age, you think of the Ice Age, it's not that. The Earth has gone through microcosm kinds of changes like this, even while you were here. You know that it's coming now, because it even has a name. Now, when it began, it was called global warming. Now it's called climate change. And someday it'll be called the climate cycle. But already there are those starting to understand that you didn't cause it. You didn't cause it. I told you that this is quite obvious and evident if you will go back and study the ice cores. Geologists, you look at the the layers in the rock. Botanists will look at the rings in the trees and they'll tell a story about cycles. And the story will tell you that long before humanity came, the earth went through cooling cycles, warming cycles, cooling cycles, warming cycles. And then in some places on the planet, it brought a lot of ice. That's what you're facing. We also told you this, and you can go back and listen and find it, that before this cycle gets cool, it's going to go into gyrations of the hottest and the coolest you've ever seen, and then finally settle on a cooler planet for a number of decades. That's what we said to you. Brian, are you going to talk about Australia? I am but not right now. What you're seeing on this planet right now, which started to be very obvious a year or so ago, is that the climate is on its way somewhere. Now, we started telling you about the cold because the cold is the most apt to terminate life. You can get out of the ways of the fires. You can have evacuations. It's coming and you can leave. Some don't make it, but in general, the population can move out of the way. But when it comes to immediate 
very fast freezing. Hundreds, if not thousands, can perish all at once because the infrastructure breaks and transportation is non-existent. And so this is why we gave many of our talks and warnings about the cold. And we continue to. And I want to give you an update. It isn't coming. It's here. Do you remember the polar vortex? <laughs> Welcome to the beginning. That was not a onesie. And it's going to happen again. Dipping down through Canada into this country called America. Temperatures so cold they are only possible to measure at the top of the earth. Temperatures that are unbelievable, that you've never seen before. Didn't just touch you, they were here. And you could see it and you could experience it, just as I said you would. And then it went back. Ask a meteorologist, well, is it going to return? And they're going to dance for you because they don't know. Common philosophy would say, no, it just happened. But they know better because climate change is starting to present itself in so dramatic a way that the hottest places are become hotter coolest places will become cooler and in between that you'll have major differences in where it rains and where it doesn't and for how long right on schedule dear ones I want to tell you about some things that I told you some things that may make sense and may not make sense when you look outside right today Phoenix, in the desert, a little cooler than you expected. This is going to happen on a regular basis and during the summer, stand by, <laughs> a little warmer than you expected. This is the earth gyrating and beginning to prepare for a cycle. There are some microclimates on this earth that go through these cycles. And the indigenous, while they were here, have something called orality. Orality is the study of and the existence of a method of communication that the indigenous have used through song and dance and poetry that tells what has happened in their history for thousands of years. Amazingly accurate, it tells of the ancestors and, yes, even the weather patterns. And there are some indigenous on this planet who will talk about the glaciers you're looking at today that are receding. It's in the news. And everyone is upset. It's like Chicken Little and the sky falling, if you remember that story, where the glaciers are receding and you're saying, oh my, oh my, global warming is here. And the indigenous takes you aside and says, excuse me, it did that three times for our ancestors. And then it came back. And then it receded. And then it came back. In other words, they saw the cycle. In microclimates, in certain parts of this planet, the cycle is much faster for reasons that are the same. They need to replenish the life in the ocean. And the only way to do it is to change the temperature. So what I'm telling you is there's so much evidence that this planet has gone through these cycles before and you can find it. And we asked the scientists to take a look at it yet again and realize that this is on schedule, not human made. And then we told you some things to be ready for. Where it's cold today, it's going to become colder. There'll be cities, and we've said this before, that will always have snow. That at the moment, don't. That's cold. 
He talks about another paradigm of what weather does. And with that comes something that is dangerous. And we have said this before. The danger is you're not prepared for it when it comes to your infrastructure. Specifically, electricity. Right now on this planet, right now, most of the utilities are stretching themselves. Turning to wind, turning to soul, solar, anything, because there is failure in the infrastructure of the grid. And it hasn't even gotten cold yet. What happens to a major city when it freezes fast? If they had a polar vortex, for instance, and they had temperatures that were so cold that the, that the wires froze and the poles came down and the trees fell and nothing could move, freezing rain, what happens to a culture, a society, a city? And the answer is they perish is what happens. That's the warning. And we said that something is coming that's going to help. I said this one other time, right before this year. I said, what I told you to expect is happening. No longer is the idea of a new kind of electricity production a fantasy. No longer is it something in an inventor's mind because right now I will tell you the magnetic engine is here and it's here in many incarnations. It's, it's been here for a while. It's been invented and now it's here and then there are, oh, there are those who are starting the second generation already. Suddenly everyone is looking at it. Now what is that magnetic engine? The simplest way all of you can understand it, is that there's incredible power in magnets. They push and they pull against each other. And the lifespan is forever. And you never looked at it as a source of moving wheels and, crea and creating electricity or anything. You decided it would be better if you had a little explosions with fuel. <laughs> And all of your cars were internal combustion and all of your machines. No one was using magnetics. And yet it's the biggest, most lasting power you were given. And now suddenly it's everywhere. Magnetic motors that will supply electricity for buildings, for homes, for devices, someday for cars, is here. It's here. Now, an old paradigm says, well, crying, you don't know how the earth, you don't know how the earth works here. You know, it's not going to be here for long because when the, when the utility companies find out about it, they're going to squash it, you know, because they want to sell their electricity. And I'll tell you, these utility companies will breathe a sigh of relief. And some of them will decide they're going to be in the magnetic motor business. They're going to embrace it with open arms because it's what the answer is. Imagine that cold spell happening and you don't care about the infrastructure and you don't care about the wires because there are none. Because there's a magnetic motor, perhaps it's not on the roof, perhaps it's buried. It's going to create electricity for you no matter what, no matter how cold it gets. It just goes and goes and goes and goes and never has to be looked at or refueled until the bearings wear out. That is the answer. It's coming. It's coming for the production of cool and heat and more. We told you there'll come a day when there are no more batteries either. Storage won't occur to be what it is today. All of these things are here. A new technology called the SuperCap is here. And all this is on purpose so that you will survive through these things, dear ones. In many years, you'll come back perhaps and listen to this and realize the question I'm asking, don't you find it interesting that the earth seems to be getting all of this at the same time when it always existed in order to solve a problem 
that they haven't really even identified yet. <laughs> there are so many things that may not make sense at the moment that will soon. When it comes to these weather changes, the inventions that are happening, the reasons for them, and the cities that are involved. There's more that I could tell you that wouldn't make sense right now. But this beautiful inventions. Imagine inventions being given to you now because consciousness is starting to move in a higher way. And so you will see these things and realize these things and be able to survive. Even the coldest cold, you'll be able to survive. And you won't have to move. Clever things are presenting themselves. Brian, what about the fires? What about Australia? Is there anything you can say about that? I am. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. The channel that follows this one, I'm going to talk about those fires and I'm going to give eye-rolling solutions. <laughs> And I'll tell you, the Australians that hear it will say, this is stupid. It'll never work. And I'll talk to you in a decade about how you're doing while you're working the puzzle that I suggested today. There are things out of the box of thinking of the paradigms that can help. Dear ones, you cannot do anything at all about the weather shift. It is what it is. It's coming, and it's going to repeat. The Australians are asking, is this going to be yearly? The answer is yes. So why don't you get ready for it? There's more than that. There are some decisions for Australia, because this is part of the climate change and the cycle. Hotter before cooler. And that is documented in the ice cores, in the tree rings, and in geology. All of these things I'm bringing you, dear ones, because humanity on this planet is going to survive all of this very well. Not just the inventions, but the consciousness that's using them. Finally, we'll start understanding that magnetics is the way for so many more things than just motors. I told you years ago that you had before you unlimited power with magnetics, without fuel, without resources from the planet, things that were given to you, then all you had to do, I have to be careful here, all you had to do was make an arrangement of the array of the magnetics so that they would push and pull each, uh, against each other forever in an array that made sense for that situation. And watch for phase relationships between the parts. Now that's as far as I'm going to go because it would infringe on things that are happening right now. <laughs> But today is the first phase, and the second phase will surprise you. By the way, if you want to track the history of electricity, when you stopped using whale oil to light your cities, and you went to electricity, it was direct current until Tesla came on. And Tesla, he found something very, very interesting he used something called phase relationships to give you alternating current, which is what you use to this very day. You see, phase relationships has always been the answer. I will leave it at that. Magnetic engines are here, dear ones. Production of power and electricity without wires, without fuel, without natural resources being used, without oil, without gas will start to be manufactured soon. Right on schedule, right on time, this is the update for climate change. I'll talk about Australia next. And so it is. <laughs>